So hi, very good evening. I hope I'm audible to you. And uh, so very good evening team also. So I hope it is audible. You guys can confirm. And uh, as I, <laughs> I can share with you today, that's some information, not all the information, but we were checking the results yesterday. So it came, uh, it was very good result as far as the institute is concerned. So the rank one, he was classroom program student. And uh, there could not be much more happiness than this, that rank one is classroom program student. And the rest of the things you will get to know by tomorrow's uh, newspaper, The Hindu. You will see tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And then onwards, there would be a kind of race among the coaching institute to claim the students. But yes. Uh, this is one information which I wanted to break to you and uh, that's a bit motivating for you also that someone from the classroom program can get rank 1. So, no brother, test series is not here. We were sitting in the beach. So, he was quite a shy guy and at the same point of time, not just shy but he was a great listener. So, over the period you will get to know. Okay? And if the toppers themselves come and they reveal it to you, so that would be better. I don't feel that I need to say these all stuff. But I felt that this is motivating thing for all of you and for us also, that hard work pays. So last class, let's get back to this. Uh, please, uh, let's get back to the class. So last class, previous, yesterday, and uh, we, I mentioned about the parallel government, not parallel government, Quit India movement and then the underground movement under the category of the Quit India movement. So now we will be seeing the another thing which was inspired from the Quit India movement and one of the statement of the Gandhi, so formation of the parallel governments. So please write a heading, parallel parallel governments. So now for some time I will disable this particular screen. See you don't talk about the other institutes and any stuff. See that's not the purpose of the screen. So let's move to the class only i will enable it but when you guys stop chatting about these results and all see what is what is important and what is uh, most pertinent to you that you work hard enough to clear the exam with very good rank and that's what must be your agenda not about that who is from which institute and what institute and uh, you will get to know and then moreover uh, you need to utilize all the services of the institute and make yourself and made yourself in such a way that next time people must be talking about your name. So parallel governments, now listen. So what Gandhi said at the time of the Quit India movement, he maintained that act as an independent nation. So act as an independent nation and that means that don't recognize British as authority. You can create your own government then. So you run your own government. So inspired by this particular statement of the Gandhi, three places in India, parallel governments were created. Meaning that already there is all India government. But at the same point of time, uh, uh, suppose that I belong to one village. Then, and I'm saying that we don't British ke rule. Ko nahi mante. We don't consider the British rule. We don't, uh, uh, we don't have the faith in British rule and it doesn't apply to us. And in uh, my village only, we decided that he would be education minister, he would be health minister, you will be seeing this stuff, that stuff, and please don't pay any heed to the British authority. That is parallel government. So three places it was created. One was at the Balia, another was in Tamluk. Midnapur area of the Bengal and then third was created in the Satara area of the Maharashtra. So please write and state control was lost for some time then. So the, why they were successfully able to create this because for some point of time state control meaning that British authorities were not able to reach at that place and that's how they were functioning. But they uh, at the end of the day some were suppressed very soon and some it for some it took little bit of time for the Britishers to suppress it. 
so very first place you write at many places at many places state control state control was temporarily seized state control was temporarily seized and people established and people established parallel governments and people established parallel government or swaraj parallel government or swaraj then then next parallel government or swaraj in balia so very first one number one three places we are there so first we need to write about this place so balia is in up actually it is a border district of the up and bihar though it is in the up but culture is quite similar to the bihar so balia there was a person his name was chitu pande so chitu pande and under his leadership a parallel government was created and this was the first parallel government to be created in fact it was created in august only so quit india has started in august and uh, within in the august only that it was created but within two months within two months it was suppressed by the british authority so you write that in balia up in balia up under the leadership of chitu pande under the leadership of chitu pande a parallel government a parallel government was formed a parallel government was formed in august in august 1942 1942 but it was suppressed but it was suppressed within few months within few months within few months then the second parallel government was created in tamluk of midnapur in bengal tamluk of midnapur in bengal and moreover this government was created in december 1942 so listen that they gave a name to this parallel government then so they gave a name to this parallel government and what was this name jatiy sarkar jatiy sarkar so this was the name moreover they set up their own departments of education health agriculture and moreover they also created an armed force which was known as vidyut vahini so they also created an armed force which was known as vidyut vahini moreover at this point of time when this government was created so there was a cyclone in the bengal and they on also performed cyclone relief work at this point of time so please write mention that the name of this parallel government was jatiya sarkar in tamluk midnapur the name of parallel government was jatiya sarkar jatiya sarkar then further you mention it set up it set up or it created its own department it created its own department of egg like its own department like education agriculture health health education agriculture health arbitration arbitration etc arbitration etc full stop then you write after that they also created an armed force they also created an armed force known as vidyut vahini known as vidyut vahini 
an armed force known as Vidyut Vahini. Then further you write after that, armed force known as Vidyut Vahini. They also performed cyclone relief work. They also performed cyclone relief work in Bengal. In Bengal. So now come to the, the last one after this third. Prati Sarkar of Satara in Maharashtra. So that was the name of the parallel government, Prati Sarkar of Satara in Maharashtra. And there were two important leaders, Vaibhi Chavan and Nana Patel. So please write that Prati Sarkar of Satara was the longest surviving Prati Sarkar of Satara was the longest surviving and effective parallel government and effective parallel government longest surviving and effective parallel government will stop then you write effective parallel government so you must be thinking that what is its establishment. So it was established in early 1943 and it continued till late, uh, in fact uh, it was October, so October 1946. So you can write that, duration you can write from early 1943 to August or say October 1946. So more uh, near about three years it was very much there. Then further you write, it had two important leaders and write these names, two important leaders, Vaibhi Chavan and Nana Patil. Nana Patil. And moreover, one of the very uh, unique feature of this particular Prati Sarkar that they created Nyay Dan Mandal. They created Nyaidan Mandal, Nyaidan Mandal, and this was known for arbitration arbitration, or you can say that known for dispensing justice and conducting known for dispensing justice and conducting mass marriages conducting mass marriages so please write that it established it established nyaidan mandal nyaidan mandal nyaidan mandal meant for meant for dispensing justice dispensing justice and conducting and conducting Gandhi marriages and conducting Gandhi marriages Gandhi marriages then next one after this so this is about the parallel government and this topic is important from the prelims exam perspective these names and uh, the places where they were established then so now let's move to the next part which is basically the efforts of the people from both the sides that Indian side, uh, Congress side and then the Muslim League side. So they were trying to conciliate and they were trying to create a united front so as they can achieve freedom as early as possible. So at this point of time when there was the Congress and the uh, Indian National Congress and Muslim League was on the loggerhead, so uh, some people from Congress and Muslim League, they decided that they will be doing some kind of talk and in this talk if they get some solution, so that would be good for the country. So the very first uh, formula which was forwarded by uh, C.R. Uh, das, 
So C. R. Not sorry, C. R. Das was dead in 1923. How many times I have repeated his name? C. Rajgopalachari. And this uh, formula is often said as that C. R. Formula. So C. R. Formula. And this formula was all about bringing the Muslim League and Indian National Congress cooperation. Okay. So what he said, what he proposed, he said that one by one you listen. That what was his proposal. So the first proposal was that Muslim League must endorse. the demand for the independence so muslim league must endorse the demand for the independence and for the time being it must cooperate in forming the interim government so it must cooperate in forming the interim government that is proposal number 1 in proposal number 2 that it's he said that by the end of the war or at the end of the war there must be a plebiscite then there must be a plebiscite in the muslim majority areas in the northwest and the northeast okay so that is bengal bangladesh bengal and then also in pakistan today's pakistan so and then after the plebiscite that it then it would be decided that there is a requirement to create a separate nation or we can go together so after the plebiscite so that is the second proposal then he said that uh in the event of partition that if after the plebiscite results are not in the favor of united india so in the event of the partition agreements would be made on all the essential matters meaning that there would be no such area for the discretion and also clarity must be there that har ek mudde pe from all the uh, on all the essential matters there must be a kind of a agreement theek hai so they will abide by they will go by the agreement and then further he said that these all which i have proposed to you these shall be binding when there is a full transfer of power from the britain to the indian government and what do he meant by this that britain from the long time it was saying dominion status dominion status meaning of the dominion status that no full transfer of power full transfer of power can only happen just like that it has happened in taliban then that us forces started to run from taliban and then now taliban has got the full power then so that is the full transfer of the power so this way only that the english forces needed to flee from india they needed to vacate this country and then the people of this country will be exercising all the power everything would be there in this hand, their hand so only in that condition these all uh, proposals would be functional theek okay? hai so this is what he said please write a heading and heading is C R formula. C R formula. And please write. Mention. In March 1944. March 1944. 44. C Rajgopalachari C Rajgopalachari evolved a formula C Rajgopalachari evolved a formula to bring about evolved a formula to bring about Congress and League cooperation to bring about Congress and League cooperation full stop congress and league cooperation full stop the number 1 proposal you right number 1 the league must endorse the league must endorse the demand for independence the demand for independence the demand for independence and cooperate and cooperate with congress and cooperate with congress in forming in would be separate from the forming don't combine otherwise it would become informing theek okay? hai so in forming interim government in forming interim government 
interim government. Then further, second you write after the end of war, after the end of war, a plebiscite, after the end of war, a plebiscite must be held, must be held, a plebiscite must be held in Muslim majority areas, must be held in Muslim majority areas in North West, in North West and North East, North East. North East that would decide that would decide whether or not whether or not these areas whether or not these areas should form these areas should form a separate state these areas should form a separate state these areas should form a separate state. Third you write, in the event of partition, in the event of partition, in the event of partition, Agreement would be made on essential matters. Agreement would be made on essential matters. Then further you write the next provision. The above terms, the above terms shall be binding. The above terms shall be binding only in case of, only in case of full transfer of power only in case of full transfer of power full transfer of power okay so this is about the cr formula it was not accepted to anybody and uh, it ended in nothing. Okay? So it ended in nothing. So the next one. After this, there are in continuation, there are three dialogues. So the next one is a very informal one. You guys must be thinking that today I'm bit, yeah, yesterday also. So uh, I would slowly continue the class today. So please bear with that. Okay? So uh, the next one was the Desai Liakat Pact. And what is this Desai Liyakat Pact? It was a kind of a very informal type of the pact. And who was Desai? That name which is standing here. So Bhulabhai Desai. And uh, the next side was on the, on the other side from the Muslim League. It was Liyakat Ali Khan. So Liyakat Ali Khan was the first Prime Minister of the uh, Pakistan. I hope you know. And moreover, that as compared to Jinnah personality. Let me tell you something about the Liyaka Tarikhan, though don't see it from the lens of the Muslim League, but good people are always, they always need to be appreciated. So Liyaka Tarikhan, uh, he was married to a lady and uh, that lady, that, that, that lady was from the Uttarakhand and uh, she was actually that they were the Uttarakhandi Brahmins then. But soon after getting married, later on, they, what they, they changed their religion to the Christianity and not only the Christianity, but she got married to the, I think she was known as the Rana, that Madam Rana. So she got married to the Liyakat Ali Khan and both were one of the finest individuals as far as that time is concerned. So when uh, partition happened, so when partition happened, so Liyakat Ali Khan had a very beautiful house in Bombay. In fact, he was from the Indian side only and then he has all his property in the 
Bombay only. So at that point of time, when they were leaving India, so when they were leaving, in fact, her, uh, this lady, that the wife of the Liaquat Ali Khan, she was one of the high commissioners of, uh, high commissioner of uh, Pakistan to the countries in the Europe. And she was a very well educated lady. So when they were leaving uh, India, so Jinnah also had a house in the Bombay, which was very famously known as the Bombay House. And in fact, that house, uh, Jinnah had one daughter. The name of the daughter was Dinah Wadia. <laughs> so Wadia, I'm saying that her name was Dinah. And Dinah got married to, against the wishes of the Jinnah, she got married to the Ness Wadia family. The same family. I hope that Ness Wadia name you have, uh, that you know. So she got married to, she did the love marriage and then after Jina disowned uh, her, uh, Jina disowned the only daughter of hers, uh, that his only daughter and then after this Bombay house, uh, he, he made a statement that it will go to the sister of the Jina, her name was Fatima. So he never left this Bombay house, he never left a claim on the Bombay house and in fact it was always a bone of contention then and it was always there in the news. Last time when there was an enemy property bill somewhere around 2015, so then after this enemy property bill, this Bombay house became the property of the government of India. But Jinnah never, uh, he never left his claim on this particular uh, Bombay house and in means that he always wanted this Bombay house to be transferred to his relatives and all those people. But Liaquat Ali Khan has a very beautiful house and that too on the bandstand. And I hope those who are from the Mumbai, they know the importance of the bandstand. So when he was leaving, so he left this house and he said that if we are going from here to the next country, so we will not go with anything else and all the things belongs to this country only. So he left his house to India. Then. The wife said that Rana said, Madam Rana said that, so we must be going with some of our stuff. So he said that the cloth that we are wearing, we will go to the next country with this cloth only. We will not take any cloth from this house because it belongs to this land only. So he was a good, he was a, another kind of personality. See, being on the different side of the political ideology does not mean that we will, we need to abuse and we need to always, all the time criticize those people. You need to appreciate their personalities also. So what happened at this point of time? I, I'm not in that rhythm, I know, but I would tell you the stories wherever it is required. So Desai Liaquat Pak. So Bhula Bhai Desai and Liaquat Ali Khan. So it was another attempt in January 1945 to bring a, uh, to bring a kind of cooperation between the, cooperation between the two people, that these two parties, International Congress and then, um, Muslim League. So in this, it was proposed, as per the deal, both the people said that Muslim League will give up, that both agreed, Muslim League will give up demand for the separate nation and uh, on the other hand, they would be given parity in the council of ministers, then meaning that half of, matlab, aadha or 50% would be given to the Muslim League. Then, But what happened later on? when Jinnah confronted Liaquat Ali Khan, so he gave up this and uh, Bhula Bhai Desai was also ridiculed and it ended in a smoke. So it became uh, informal only. These people first initiated a talk between themselves and then they revealed to their respective parties but when they were both were rebu rebuked, so this particular uh, pact was ending in the smoke. So it ended in the smoke. So please write Desai Liaquat Dialogue. So please mention next one, Desai Liaquat Dialogue. Then further you mention January 1945. You can write the date January 1945. And then you mention, it was another attempt, it was another attempt to end deadlock between, it was another attempt to end deadlock between, deadlock between Muslim League and Congress. 
Muslim League and Congress. Further, you write after full stop. As per the deal, as per the deal, Muslim League will give up. As per the deal, Muslim League will give up demand for demand for separate nation. Demand for separate nation. Demand for the separate nation. And in return, and in return, Muslims will be given, in return, Muslims will be given parity, parity in the Council of Ministers. Muslims will be given parity in the Council of Ministers. So, the next, after this, the third plan or dialogue, you can say, not dialogue, the third offer at this point of time, and we will write it as a Wevel's plan. So you write Wevel's plan, and Simla conference, Wevel's plan and Simla conference. So, what is this Wevel's plan? Listen, that it is named after the person who was the Viceroy of India at this point of time. So, uh, at this point of time, Winston Churchill in Britain in 1945, elections were to happen. And in Britain, I hope uh, I have talked about this thing earlier. So, there was a trend that uh, anti-incumbency factor was always very strong in Britain. So, one term for the Conservative Party to which Winston Churchill belonged and one term to the Labour Party and which was very soft towards or as compared to the Conservative Party it was a bit ameliorative or a bit soft towards the Indian causes then so Indian causes and in fact majority of the Indian political reforms they happened at the time of the uh, Labour Party so uh, there was this election which was to happen and Churchill he always considered, he was always seeing himself as one of the greatest statesmen of that time and he always considered that labor people are the fool people then. So he wanted to reach the uh, constitutional issue of India, that to reach a kind of solution to the constitutional issue of India and moreover, he did not want to leave this very important question of the Indian, con uh, that Indian constitutional reform to the labor people which he considered they are imbecile and uh, there was at the same point of time, the U.S. pressure was always mounting and uh, one more that Churchill always wanted to, uh, wanted that he must be seen in the history as the one that who uh, gave a solution to India and solution to India not only but also within the British Empire, then so within the British Empire. So he pressurized and he uh, maintained that Viceroy must give some kind of avenues to the Indians and as such this is the time that in 1945 all the major political prisoners of the Congress and all the other from other important parties also they were all released from the jail and everybody was invited to participate in this Simla conference then so they participated in the Simla conference but what Wevel proposed that was nothing new then it was like a rusted nail that they are uh, sowing to the people all the time. So please uh, write few words about the Churchill at this point of time. So Churchill was keen to reach a solution Churchill was keen to reach a solution solution of Indian constitutional question of Indian constitutional question full stop then you write you mention in june 1945 in june 1945 all the major leaders all the major leaders of congress of Congress were 
रिलीज्ड फ्रॉम जेल वॉर रिलीज्ड फ्रॉम जेल देन यू राइट देन यू मेंशन द कीननेस ऑफ चर्चिल द कीननेस ऑफ चर्चिल वॉज बेस्ड ऑन the keenness of churchill was based on the general elections the general elections to be held in england to be held in england in 1945 to be held in england in 1945 and also and also due to the pressure of due to the pressure of, from his allies but also due to the pressure from his allies particularly us so particularly us so then you can mention about the this particular simla conference and what happened so they have participated in the simla conference all the leaders what were the provisions so listen so he said that what we will offer that except governor general and uh, commander in chief listen that except governor general and commander in chief all the members of the executive council would be indians chalo very first one so this is the first one then he said an interim government must be formed within the premise of the government of india act 1935 then so 1935 but the third one was something which irked, irked many of the indian nationalist leader that hindu and muslims to have equal representation so hindus and muslims to have equal representation so in fact the problem with this provision was that if they don't if they don't share the equal population so how come that equal representation would be there so that is unfair and that is unfair in the proportionate in the proportion of the population then then he said that governor general can exercise on the advice of the minister then so governor general can exercise veto on the advice of the minister so basically this provision is nullifying that so many indian members would be there that is quite contradictory at one place you are saying that uh, everybody would be indian in the executive council and on the other hand you are saying that governor general can veto uh, on the advice of the can exercise veto on the advice of the minister so basically ministers are just a decorative piece and then they will propose something and obviously the viceroy is going to work in the favor of the favor of the uh, british empire and then he will veto it and that that's what was happening then the last one he said that negotiation on the new constitution only after the war so negotiation on new constitution only after the war one more thing i need to tell you that uh, wevel was one of the you can say that villains in the indian history at this point of time in 1940s in fact he was the one who fanned the emotion who fanned the emotions of a separate nation even there could have been a solution to the uh, this separate nation but wevel was also the one who was quite closer to the pakistan and particularly quite closer to the muhammad ali jinnah and he always favored muslim league then so he always favored muslim league and uh, he was the one who fanned many a times their emotions informally i'm not saying formally but informally so please write few words about this simla conference or points of this simla conference so number 1 you write except governor general except governor general and commander in chief except governor general and commander in chief all the members all the members of all the members of executive council were to be indians all the members of executive council were to be indians were to be indians then next you write second an interim government an interim government should be formed an interim government should be formed within the premise of within the premise of government of india act 1935 government of india act 1935 then third please mention 
Hindus and Muslims Hindus and Muslims to have Hindus and Muslims to have equal representation to have equal representation then next governor general can exercise governor general can exercise veto on the advice of ministers veto on the advice of ministers can exercise veto on the advice of ministers then further you write negotiations on new constitution negotiation on new constitution after the war is over after the war is over so this is finally the last thing that last uh, plan that we have mentioned now we are moving towards the freedom so let's start with the more important topic that is indian national army azad hind force and i will talk about the okay gandhi marriages you guys but i didn't mentioned in today's class gandhi marriages no issues see what you wrote what we wrote about today oh, sorry nyay mandal so nyay mandals or nyay dan mandals these were meant for the dispensing the gandhi marriages okay or mass marriages i told you in today's class it is mass marriage but let me define that what is this see there are many poor people in indian society who cannot afford to go with the pomp and so then and they cannot afford to even manage the uh, finances for getting married so in this situation and that's what happens even today also it is followed i i think that last to last year when the pandemic was not there so uh, there was a news uh, in indore where the mp government organized this mass marriages and in fact uh, in up also I, not exactly i remember that which place it happened but respective governments of the states they do organize so basically it is for those all poor people who go by the ritual who are going by the rituals as per the hindu rituals their marriage is happening but not with the big flare up and then pomp and so and there's all band baja barat it's just a marriage a ritual union of the two people into a institution of the marriage so that's as simple as that theek hai usme aur bhi kuch aisa nahi janna hai so that's why i said that mass marriage so what you call it samuhik vivah uh that's what what's that's what the term which we use nowadays then that samuhik vivah theek hai so aur gandhi marriages isliye bolte the ek bhi wajah thi these were the samuhik vivah only but they were calling it gandhi marriage because this all people were inspired from the gandhi and the speeches of the gandhi so they named it gandhi marriage in fact did i told you at the time of the chauri chaura incident that uh what people of uh chauri chaura were believing about the gandhi this they said that when this uh, non cooperation movement started so the people of uh, chauri chaura was of the view that uh, gandhi is a magical person and if he touches the air so air will become a ice and it will fall down so he can change anything to anything in fact they believed that gandhi has this uh, character of or this trait of the alchemy that he can turn anything into the anything he can turn any metal into the gold so this kind of magical belief they were holding and in the name of the gandhi they decreated that ruckus or they created that violence and that's how gandhi was very dissatisfied he actually when he withdrew the ncm so he was of the view that i have launched the movement the, but the masses have not understood the concept of the non violence i did mention about the struggle true say struggle that you have written so uh, he was also of the view that the people are participating in this mass movement but they have not understood the meaning of the non violence and that's why they have resorted to the violence so vapas chalte aate so now let's write so mention indian national army
और यू कैन राइट आजाद हिंद फौज एंड फर्स्ट सिंस लॉन्ग टाइम वी आर मैंशनिंग अबाउट द बोस बट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सम अदर थिंग्स सम अदर स्टफ एसोसिएटेड विद द बोस दैट हिज एक्लेट्स एंड देन हिज अचीवमेंट्स देन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सुभाष चंद्र बोस वॉज बॉर्न इन कटक इन ओडिशा इन एटीन नाइन्टी सेवन सो कटक इन ओडिशा इन एटीन नाइन्टी सेवन मोर ओवर ही ग्रेजुएटेड फ्रॉम द कैलकटा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इन द ईयर नाइनटीन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी सो एटीन नाइन्टी सेवन टू नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी हाउ मेनी दैट वॉट इज हिज एज सो लेट मी राइट एटीन Hardly 22 years, then 23 it seems, but hardly 22 years. So basically, uh, in 22 year age only, he secured the fourth rank in the Indian Civil Services exam. So Subham, you have chance then to secure this rank at a very early age. Then, so <laughs> so what I, I was saying that 1897 to 1920, he secured the fourth rank in the Indian Civil Services exam. at that time only he was very much influenced with the cr das so this time cr das then earlier i was using cr das word for the sri rajgopalachari this time it for cr das only chitranjan das so he he was uh, subhash chandra bose was quite inspired from him and then he made cr das as his political guru and uh, inspired by cr das he started to participate in the national movement and which kind which national movement was there at this time non cooperation so non cooperation so he participated and moreover in relation to this non cooperation only in 1921 for the very first time he went to jail also okay so that's one thing then in another achievement of the subhash chandra bose that in 1923 he became mayor of calcutta so at the age of 22 he is clearing the exam at the age of 25 he is becoming mayor of calcutta so that's a big that one of the very big achievement of this person and it proves the intellectual capacity and also not just the intellectual capacity but what makes a man man that his risk risk taking capacity so i was telling risk <laughs> that's what, that's what many people say and many a times it also comes to my tongue that i use this thing so his risk taking capacity and believe in his methods and the ideals and then go to any extent for the freedom of this country so uh this is one part then you have heard that then you have written about the things associated with his political endeavors and then all those fights with the gandhi and not fights but ideological differences with the gandhi and he resigned from the congress so after resigning from the congress what happened that for some point of time britishers house arrested him in his calcutta bangalore so he was house arrested in his uh, calcutta home and one fine day one fine night so he decided that he was in search of the opportunity and one fine night he found that opportunity so he uh, fled from his own house and first he entered into the afghanistan not the talibani afghanistan from afghanistan he went to central asia from central asia he entered into the russia and finally he reached berlin so finally he reached berlin in germany so there he uh, persuaded hitler and uh, he got the support of the german authorities in the berlin so at that place that in the world war 2 you know that indian soldiers the indian natives who are the part of the british army they are fighting the world war 2 on behalf of the britain so on behalf of the britain and the allies of the britain so near about 3000 soldiers of indian uh, citizen nature they were arrested by the german uh, german forces so at this point of time hitler gave this 3000 soldiers to the subhash chandra bose and with this prisoners of war subhash chandra bose created a particular army in the germany for the cause of the freedom of india and the name of the army was free india free india legion free india legion then so he created free india legion many a times in hindi books you will 
find this name it was called as mukti sena but in fact when you will be reading so when you will be reading uh, this uh, post independence so then when the Bang bangladesh uh, uh, freedom war will come into the picture or bangladesh liberation war not freedom war liberation war will come into the picture so there also you will come across with this term mukti sena so this was also called as the mukti sena okay so it comprised of the prisoners of war of indian nature and they all were who were captured by the german forces now so this the soldiers of this particular free india legion they are the one who started to call subhash chandra bose as neta ji and at this point of time neta word was a positive term okay because neta has this ability capability to turn the things from negative to the positive then so what how he has turned the things that earlier they were prisoners then and now they have become the part and parcel of the uh, india's liberation uh, army and moreover they have the support of the germany then so that's how he turned the allegiance of these particular soldiers from the british side to the indian side to the indian freedom side so that's why they started to call him neta so neta is basically it was basically a positive term it's only in the modern days that when we talk about the neta so there are many formations in our mind and that's are these all these all thought formations are really very true so this is what is one part please write few words and then i will tell you rest of the story that from germany how he is moving to the singapore so please write subhash chandra bose he was born in katak odisha he was born ha that is mukti vahini very good giridhar that is mukti vahini in uh, so you guys have just i think that abhi hal filhal mein post independence padha hai mukti vahini and here it was mukti sena to dono jagah mukti tha but sena aur vahini alag ho gaya you right in 1897 he was born in katak in 1897 graduated from calcutta university graduated from calcutta university then further you write he secured fourth rank he secured fourth rank in indian civil services exam indian civil services exam then you write cr das cr das was his political guru cr das was his political guru guru and inspired and inspired by him inspired by him he joined he joined indian national movement he joined indian national movement indian national movement then you write in 1921 in 1921 for the first time he went to jail for the first time he went to jail in relation to non cooperation movement in relation to non cooperation movement then further you write the next one in 1923 in 1923 he became mayor of calcutta he became mayor of calcutta mayor of calcutta full stop and then so you can change paragraph and uh, you can write about his germany episode theek okay? hai so in 1940s when he escaped from india in 1940s when he escaped from india and landed in germany and landed in germany he sought alliance he sought alliance with hitler he sought alliance with hitler he sought alliance with hitler 
full stop as such as such he was successful as such he was successful in creating as such he was successful in creating a 3000 soldier soldiers st strong a 3000 sol soldier strong Mukti Free India Legion or Mukti Sena. Free India Legion or Mukti Sena. Mukti Sena. Comprising of comprising of prisoners of war. Comprising of prisoners of war of Indian origin prisoners of war of Indian origin then of Indian origin then you write the soldiers of Mukti Sena the soldiers of Mukti Sena started to call Bose Neta Ji. Started to call Bose Neta Ji. So this is one part. Now listen. So when it comes to the Indian National Army, Indian National Army, the idea of the Indian National Army was mooted by Captain Mohan Singh. Okay? So Captain Mohan Singh in the Malay Peninsula. So in the Malay Peninsula. And later on, when Subhash Chandra Bose, he arrived in Singapore, so he took charge of the this uh, Indian National Army, and not just the Indian National Army, but also IIL, and India Independence League. If you remember, this India Independence League, when it was created, so it, this way you will revise also. You remember that when Nehru report was uh, given, so that Nehru report related to the protest of the Simon Commission and then Motilal Nehru headed committee and uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose, Satyamurti, they rejected this thing, this Nehru report and then they created India Independence League. But later on this league became very famous because of the, the revolutionary whom we have studied in the second phase, Ras Bihari Bose. So this organization, Indian Independence, India Independence League, was functioning under the leadership of the Ras Bihari Bose in uh, Malay Peninsula only. And Ras Bihari Bose was also connected with the Mohan Singh. So he went to he went to Singapore and he took control of both the things that Indian National Army and IIL. And that's how you can say that he reorganized Indian National Army. And that is happening around somewhere around 1944. So please write that mention that change paragraph and then you write. The idea of Indian National Army, the idea of Indian National Army was first conceived, was first conceived in Malay Peninsula, in Malay Peninsula by Captain Mohan Singh by Captain Mohan Singh by Captain Mohan Singh then further you write with POWs the same thing you will be writing prisoners of war of Indian origin with the POWs Hallwell monument issue was related with the uh, that particular issue of the I think I have talked about that it was related with the issue of the black hole tragedy then so the counter argument of the Subhash Chandra Bose is there but here, chalo, I will, I, I'll see that, I will discuss, okay, later on. So give me some time, I'll discuss, no worries. So now, first of all, you write with POWs of Indian origin, then you write, when Subhash Chandra Bose, when, when Bose landed in,
when Bose landed in Singapore, he took full control. He took full control of. He took full control of INA and India Independence League. India Independence League. headed by Ras Bihari Bose headed by Ras Bihari Ras Bihari Bose Ras Bihari Bose and Ras Bihari Bose and he restructured INA and he restructured INA. Then, further you mention? So, after arriving in the Southeast Asia, Bose created Azad Hind government in the exile, and that's a provincial free Indian government in the exile. And in April 1944, he created Azad Hind Bank in Rangoon. Rangoon is in Myanmar. And on 6th of July 1944, Bose addressed Gandhi as the, that uh, he addressed or he's uh, kind of proclaimed at that point of time, Gandhi to be the father of the nation. Then, so though the term Bapu was very popular from long time, but Bapu does not mean that he is father of the nation. But for the first time that somebody who is calling Gandhi as the father of the nation, so that goes to the Subhash Chandra Bose. But never ever get confused with the term Bapu. Bapu was <laughs> given to the Gandhi, it was, he was called as Bapu by many people, but changing this translation into the father of nation, that is uh, attributed to the Subhash Chandra Bose. So please write that in Southeast Asia, in Southeast Asia, Bose created Azad Hind government, Bose created Azad Hind government government and what is this so you write a provincial free government of india a provincial free government of india in exile a provincial free government of india in exile in exile then you write in april 1944 in april 1944 he created Azad Hind Bank, Azad Hind Bank at Rangoon, at Rangoon. At Rangoon. Here the provincial word stands for the all the provinces of the British India. Okay? So that's why provincial. So, here provincial, it's a word, but that does not mean that one province, the, all the provinces of the, all the provinces of the government of India. And moreover, it was temporary. Okay? So, it was temporary, it was not fully recognized. So, in exile, okay? it's a symbolic, you can also say, that in the interest of India, the decisions are taken in exile. Okay, so that's the meaning. Further you write, on 6th of July 1944, on 6th of July 1944, Bose became the first person, Bose became the first person to address Gandhi as, to address Gandhi as father of nation, to address Gandhi as father of nation. Then, so now, I would ask one thing to you at this point of time. So, uh, the two exhortation which Gandhi, uh, Bose has given. See, exhortation I will give to you, okay? But you will have to translate it in a beautiful manner, okay? In a way, so that it becomes emphatic. In a way, so that it becomes something interesting and rhythmic. Not just the simple translation. So he gave two... Uh, exhortation. One is a very common one, which is not 
uh, you can say that, which is not the creation of the boast, but he is repeating that exhortation. And this exhortation is in the circulation from the 1930s. When the first report or when the first news of the round table conference came, there was one meeting in Delhi uh, of the all Indian uh, leaders and they released a Delhi manifesto in which they said Delhi Chalo. Okay? So this Delhi Chalo is the first exhortation. So it is already there in the circulation from long time. In fact, even in the individual Satyagraha that they use this term Delhi Chalo. Okay? And here uh, Subhash Chandra Bose is also repeating Delhi Chalo. So that is one. And the second one which was his own creation. So that was, let me write it in uh, Roman numerals but in Hindi. So that is, Tum Mujhe Khoon Do Main Tumhe Azadi Dunga Kya Dunga? Azadi <laughs> I am repeating the words from the Rangde Basanti So, tum mujhe khoon do, main tumhe azadi dunga. Translate it. Then, and let's see that how beautifully you translate. In fact, there was English version of this also, which Subhash Chandra Bose has written. So, let's see that what you guys are writing at this point of time. Okay? So, dekhte, kya likhte ho tum lo? So, please write that this one. Meanwhile, Main tumhe aza. Give me blood. No, I don't want this simple kind of translation. That's what I said to you. Give me blood, I'll give freedom. See, if it would have been that simple, so I must not have asked you. Then, you sacrifice your life for the nation. I'll give you freedom. Chalo, there is a little change in this. So, little change, uh, Kritika, that was okay. And <laughs> see, you needed to translate. You don't need to give me another phrase. I'm just reading it from uh, very close that what you guys are writing. So, now I'll, 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 I'll tell you the exact word which Subhash Chandra Bose mentioned and in his own words. So he said that I'm convinced, I'm convinced that, I'm convinced that if we desire, if we desire, if we do desire freedom, then we have to pre be prepared to wade through our blood. So this is what was the sentence of the Subhash Chandra Bose. Please write quickly. So please write quickly that these two exhortations you have written and you write that I'm convinced, I'm convinced that if we do desire, I'm convinced that if we do desire, do desire freedom, freedom, we must be prepared, we must be prepared to wade through, we must be prepared to wade through our blood, to wade through our blood. So that's a good attempt from all of you. But see that what you have written right now, this kind of language is called as the emphatic language. Then, so it is the emphatic language. You guys were writing right, but in a simple language. Okay. So obviously, baat hai, that if you guys would be set to write this thing, so somebody is writing this kind of translation that you guys have uh, written and then somebody has written. So if you get one, the person who would be writing this one, he will get 1.25. Okay? Thoda sa marks bad jayega. So that's what is the role of this one. So now listen. So these two exhortations he gave and then he also created a women regiment of the INA. So he also created a women regiment of the INA, which was known as Rani Jhansi. And uh, there was one captain in this particular Rani Jhansi regiment. Her name was Captain uh, that Captain uh, Lakshmi. Okay. So uh, that uh, one, sorry, that I I am just forgetting 
the name of the lady i'll get back to you lakshmi sehgal yes so captain lakshmi sehgal so she was the one who was one of the captain of this rani jhansi regiment and then subhash chandra bose launched this imphal campaign so he launched this imphal campaign with the support of the southern branch of the japanese army so southern branch of the japanese army but with this particular campaign of the subhash chandra bose or ina it ended in a disaster and by this time britishers were fully prepared and ina had no option just to surrender so just to surrender and uh, they surrendered unconditionally at this point of time so after this surrender the thing which is going to happen in india that is the ina trials and there would be huge uproar all over india related to ina trials so there are some interesting details related to ina trials also we will talk about that but first you write then so you have written till this point of time these two slogans and then you mention that he also created he also created not lakshmi swaminathan lakshmi sehgal then so i would be talking about her later on also in the contribution of women in the freedom struggle later on that last part would uh, of the our course would be about the contribution of women during the freedom struggle so please write women regiment named as rani jhansi named as rani jhansi but but then you mention due to the ill fated imphal campaign but due to the ill fated imphal campaign ill fated imphal campaign launched comma launched with the support of japan's launched with the support of japan's southern army with the support of japan's southern army ended in a disaster ended in a disaster ended in a disaster full stop you right ina ina surrendered unconditionally ina surrendered unconditionally to the british authority to the british authority in singapore in singapore 1945 1945 so after this we need to talk about the post war upsurge which includes the first of all ina trials so after the ina members have surrendered their trials are going to happen so initially it was decided sun lo thoda sa so <laughs> initially it was decided that it would be one to one a kind of a court kind of hearing but later on britishers made it public then and made it public hearing so the historic red fort trials were there so the very first trial which happened so related to that information i would deliver to you but first you write this heading i'm feeling little heavy today so please mention a heading post war upsurge post war upsurge then post war upsurge and in this you write ina trials in a trials so now listen that these all people who were associated with the ina they were all arrested by the british authority they are kept in different different jail and their sentences that their execution or their trials has started not execution but the trials has started first the trial will be complete and then the execution ha can happen so the very first was the historic trial of the red fort and at that point of time uh indian national congress theek hai so indian national congress created a committee and name of the committee was the indian defense committee so what was this indian defense committee it it this indian defense committee was uh created for the purpose of defending the ina prisoners then so for defending the ina prisoners 
and who were the important leaders of this Indian Defence Committee. So Jawaharlal Nehru, Bhola Bhai Desai, Tej Bahadur Sapru, Hori Lal, K. N. Kadju. So they were they were the members of this Indian Defence Committee, meaning that these all are these all were the lawyers. Then so these all were the lawyers and they have the good knowledge of the law. So they would be defending the INA prisoners. But who was that most important INA prisoners? So basically in the uh, Red Fort trials, there were three INA officers. Their names were Prem Sehgal and there was one name, his name was Dhillan and the first title would be something. So Dhillan, I think Dheeraj Dhillan and the third person was the uh, Sahanawaj Khan. So Sahanawaj Khan, so these three people, so Britishers, they charge them with different different kind of uh, that uh, crimes and they charge them with the arsoning they charge them with the murder they charge them with the sedition what all sorts of charges can be made it was made on all of all the three and uh, a sentence was about to be pronounced about them that sentence was the lifetime sentence for these three officers what was very important over here that the three officers if you go by their name you will find a one very uh, unique thing and what was that one was a Hindu one was a Sikh and one was a Muslim then so Sikh Muslim and Hindu and it evoked it in fact not evoked provoked the sentiments of all the Indians equally then so sentiments of all the Indians equally be it Sikh be it Muslim be it Hindu and for the first time though the Indian National Congress and the Muslim League they are altogether on the different path their ideologies are not matching but for the INA trials they came together then and the flags of Indian National Congress and Muslim League were hoisted together then just in the defense of the INA prisoners then so when the pronouncement of that when the pronouncement of their judgment or basically that what kind of punishment they will get so they were pronounced lifetime imprisonment so lifetime imprisonment and after this a huge uproar was there all over India arsoning and different kind of activities were happening people became berserk and then they started uh, looting the British uh, that symbols and then also charging on the British symbols then attacking on the British places so there was a huge uproar then there was a second INA trial okay, that is said as the Calcutta uh, INA trials and there there was one INA officer Rashid Ali when he was imprisoned for seven years so then in Cal Calcutta also there was same sort of involvement so basically this INA trials they did not work in the favor of the British but it further provoked the feeling of the Indian people and moreover what I said to you that Sahanawaj Dhillan and Prem Sehgal the judgment that kind of uh, that uh, uh, judgment which was punishment which was given to them it was never executed because after one year India became free and then by that time the Indian Defense Committee very well defended them and countered the British authority okay so this is what happened so please write all the three from different religion Gurbax very good Sivangi so that was Gurbax Dhillan and uh, uh, Prem Sehgal and Sehnawaj Khan so these were the three leaders of the INA whose trials were going on so please write INA trials in the defense of INA prisoners in the defense of INA prisoners Indian National Congress, INA prisoners, Indian National Congress created Indian Defense Committee, Indian Defense Committee, which included, which included Jawaharlal Nehru, Bhola Bhai Desai, Bhola Bhai Desai. Ken Kadju, Ken Kadju, Tej Bahadur Sapru, Tej Bahadur Sapru, and Lieutenant Hori Lal. Lieutenant Hori Lal. Lieutenant Horilal. 
Done? Then, they defended INA prisoners. They defended INA prisoners at the historic, at the historic Red Fort trials. At the historic Red Fort trials. Red Fort trials. Then further you mention. The pronouncement of the pronouncement of punishment. The pronouncement of punishment. Or punishment ki jagar likho lifetime imprisonment. The pronouncement of life term imprisonment for the three INA officers, for the three INA officers, Prem Sehgal, Gurbaks Dhillan, Gurbaks Dhillan, and Sahanawaj Khan. Sahnawaj Khan enraged Sahnawaj Khan enraged the sentiments of enraged the sentiments of all the Indians equally sentiments of all the Indians equally equally and they resorted to violence they resorted to violence Moreover, moreover, communalism you will be reading after the independence. That topic I'll cover. Okay, don't worry, Subham. I'll be covering later on after the independence. But communalism you will also read in the society. So there are two places where you read the communalism, all the sorts of communalism. More elaborately from the Indian society perspective in the so Indian society and then here also from historical purpose perspective and also from the perspective of the understanding of the stages of the communalism. I will be telling you tomorrow we don't have class so next week when we have class so then I would be covering that topic. So please write meanwhile what you have written I forgot at what I was telling you. So and raise the feeling of the Indian moreover for the first time for the first time. Muslim League and Indian National Congress Muslim League and Indian National Congress were together were together in the defense of INA prisoners in the defense of INA prisoners and their flags and their flags were hoisting together their flags were hoisting together. Then second incident also you write. Monday, Tuesday. No, Tuesday you don't have class, only Monday. Tuesday I have taken off. Because this continuous classes, it is taking toll on me. In fact, I was, uh, I thought that I would ask for, that if somebody else is available so that person can take your class in the evening today but nobody was available so I thought that I must come but this continuous classes I need a little bit of uh, pause at this point of time so I'm thinking that after completing your batch I will take a little bit of pause so please write second thing which I mentioned to you so you write on 11th of February on 11th of February 1946 on 11th of February 1946 the public revolted the public revolted against against public revolted against seven year sentence seven year sentence given to seven year sentence given to INA prisoner, INA officer you can write, 
don't write prisoner, INA officer Rashid Ali. Abdul Rashid Ali, his full name was Abdul Rashid Ali. Abdul Rashid Ali. Okay. So this is one part that on I, on one hand, INA has enraged the feeling of the people of India. And on the other hand, the last nail in the coffin of the British would be the RIN revolt. So further, this, I, uh, this INA trials, they have motivated Indian people to revolt. So then RIN revolt is going a, a step further than this. Then, so let's write, and that's the part of post-war upsurges. So that's what I have written in the beginning. What I wrote as a major heading, post-war upsurges, in which first you have write, written about the INA trials, and the second is the RIN revolt. So please write the second part. Royal Indian Navy. Royal Indian Navy Revolt. Generally, we call it RIN Revolt. Then, so now listen. What is this RIN Revolt? And what is the reason of this that Royal Indian Navy revolt. So already they are motivated by Quit India movement. They are motivated by and their feelings are also hurt because of these INA trials. And obviously, no matter that they are working for the British or not, but the sense of feeling which was generated among the Indian population that they all are Indians. Then, so this particular bonding is developing at this point of time. But the reason of the revolt, the immediate reason of the revolt was quite different. Then, so here. In the Royal Indian uh, Navy, particularly in Bombay, there was this ship and name of this ship was HMIS Talwar. So name of this ship was HMIS Talwar and the full name, I think that HMIS full uh, name of this ship is His Majesty of Indian Ship Talwar. Then, so His Majesty of Indian Ship Talwar. So this, in this, the Royal Indian Navy ratings, RIN rating, ratings, they revolted. So generally, we do call the people in the army as the sepoy, and here we call them ratings. So the ratings of this particular ship, they revolted. Then, so they revolted, and what was the reason that why they revolted? So unpalatable food was the reason which was served to them because of which they immediately revolted. And actually, it was continuing from last one week that they were served the unpalatable food. What you can, that how you can translate it into Hindi, that what is unpalatable. In a very beautiful, that in English you need to write this big word unpalatable food, but in Hindi one word would be enough, sada hua khana. Okay? So this is what was served to these people and it was so awry to them that they finally decided that they are not going to uh, tolerate this anymore and moreover their emotions were also fanned because of the racial mistreatment which was given to them many a times Britishers abused them with the boots and then also not just the boots but or oral abuse was also very common then so uh, at this point of time when they revolted there was one Royal Indian Navy rating his name was BC Dutt and he uh, screamed on the, the on this particular ship and he screamed Britishers quit India. So, Britishers, Britishers, Angrejo Bharat Chodo. So, when he screamed, so he was fired from his position and moreover he was imprisoned. So, when he was imprisoned, so it was resented by all his colleagues and all his, uh, uh, all the ratings in the HMIS Talwar and very soon, you know, that very soon this particular RIN revolt, it is spread to that first it started from the one ship. And within a week, that 200 ships which were docked at the 
uh, Mumbai port, they all revolted. And moreover, they not only revolted, but one of the very interesting things that happened at this point of time, since Taj Hotel that was used by the British authority at this point of time, they mounted all these ships, they mounted guns on these ships, and they all directed it towards the gateway of India, and then uh, this particular uh, Taj Hotel, which is in front of the gateway of India. And if this was not enough, so then the Karachi revolt also happened. So Karachi was not first, but it was very important place of the Aryan revolt. So the person who handled this Aryan issue, you know who was this person? So Britishers actually, this is called as the last nail in the coffin of the British rule because they were quite frightened at this point of time and no solution was seeming to them. And moreover, their appeals to the Aryan uh, ratings that was not at all working. So at this time, the British authority, they knew the person that who to go for, who can convince these ratings. And you know who was that person? That person was Sardar Patel. So Sardar Patel was persuaded by the British authority to persuade the ratings to avoid this kind of skiffle. And uh, then Sardar Patel, when he commanded to the Aryan people and Aryan ratings, they uh, they decided that they will he pay heed to the orders of the Sardar Patel. So by this time, you can see one such change that earlier, these that one such contribution. One hand, you are seeing that contribution of the Subhash Chandra Bose, that he is turning the allegiance of the Indians in the British army towards the cause of India. And so uh, Sardar Patel was also commanding his allegiance to of RIN towards the cause of India and moreover they are also paying heed to his orders then so paying heed to his orders but the sad story of this particular RIN revolt is that everybody forgot them after the independence even our then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru so uh, he also forgot and uh, moreover they were not given any such kind of many people were given such medals and then uh, employment in the government services, but they were left to uh, bite the dust in a rubble then. So nobody remembered them after that, only for the purpose of the independence that 1947 when ka bot role so people remember, but you need to do something for them and that our first prime minister did not did for them. So please write, RIN revolt, please mention, okay? So yes, it is what? part of the post-war upsurge. That's what I mentioned. So you write that on 18th of February 1946, on 18th of Feb 1946, 1946, at Bombay, the ratings of, at Bombay, the ratings of Royal Indian Navy, the ratings of Royal Indian Navy striked. Striked. Then you write, eleven hundred naval ratings of 1100 naval ratings of HMIS Talwar HMIS Talwar then you write HMIS Talwar stuck stuck struck work at Bombay struck work at Bombay to protest against to protest against the treatment to protest against the treatment meted out to them to protest against the treatment meted out to them meted out to them full stop then you write They were served, they were served unpalatable food. They were served 
अनकलेटेबल फूड His Majesty of Indian Ship. That's the full form. His Majesty Indian Ship, Talwar. Then further you write, unpalatable food, comma, flagrant racial discrimination, flagrant racial discrimination, and abuses to the boot. and abuses to the boot abuses to the boot full stop then you write you can change paragraph since we are writing in the continuation so the arrest of a rating bc dat the arrest of a rating bc dat for screaming for screaming britishers quit india for screaming britishers quit india the arrest of a rating bc dat for screaming britishers quit india on hmis talwar on hmis talwar was sorely resented so his arrest is sorely resented that's the meaning was sorely resented by the indians was sorely resented by the indians and it further motivated and it further motivated the royal indian navy revolt of karachi it further motivated the royal indian navy revolt of karachi revolt of karachi so one more line you write the aryan revolt the aryan revolt in indian history in indian history is seen as is seen as last nail last nail in the coffin of british rule last lay, nail last nail in the coffin of british rule in india in india so listen 18th of february this has started and at the same point of time that 18th in india this has started and in on 19th of february 1946 british prime minister clement attlee and he is a labor politician then so thank god that india's freedom happened under the labor politician and not under the winston churchill otherwise he could have become a god then so he could have become a god so please uh, you write that on 19th of february 1946 clement atley clement atley clement atley actually the british prime minister british prime minister and what he did so he announced in house of commons that he is going to send cabinet mission to india so he is going to send cabinet mission to india with three important officer and who are these so pethick lawrence and then again stefford cripps then so pethick lawrence stefford cripps and av alexander so this cabinet mission is a kind of that at that point of time it was seen as a final thing in the constitutional question of india but here also there were so many uh, rejections but finally going by the plan of the cabinet mission the interim government and the constituent assembly was created then so please write british prime minister announced in house of commons announced the house in the house of commons commons to dispatch to dispatch cabinet mission to india to dispatch cabinet mission to india to dispatch cabinet mission to india then you write which included three british officers which included three british officers 
A.V. Alexander, Pethic Lawrence, Pethic Lawrence and Stafford Cripps and Stafford Cripps. Stafford Cripps. Then, so this is cabinet mission. We, I'll talk about this cabinet mission. But before that, I just want to ask you this. Have I told you that one episode of the Winston Churchill and then one cab driver? Have I told this episode or this story to you? Real story uh, at one point of time. So if I have told, so I will not tell you again. But if I haven't told, so I would like to share this story of the Churchill itself. In the, and in fact, Churchill himself wrote this story that what happened. So what matters in the world? So <laughs> so, uh, to your question that nahi bataya hai, theek hai, chalo. So Gandhi was quite ill at this point of time and by this time Gandhi was quite fragile. He was released from the jail and then in fact he was quite fragile at this point of time. So now listen. So <laughs> this last story I'll give you a break after that one. So what happened that uh, this is a story that once that Churchill, there was one good aspect of the Churchill that he always used the public transport then. So he has a very big uh, speech then, very big speech and people were dying for listening to the speeches of the Churchill then and they were full of wisdom and the full of wit and the full of intelligence then and moreover it touches the common sentiments of the people. So on that day, one particular day, there was uh, the national speech of the Winston Churchill then. So he uh, moved out of his house and then uh, he, since he was always wearing those cut coat and everything then and he was keeping that he was keeping a scarf on his mouth because that day was quite cold. So he just that one cab stopped by him and then he asked that cab wala to drop him to the a particular museum or a particular place. So then when he was going to that particular place, so he said to that cab driver that if you stay at that place for one hour, so I would return back to this place and I will give you a little bit of more money. So then that cab driver said that no, 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 I will drop you over there and then I have a very important work and I cannot drop you back at this place. So then Churchill said that why the hell that what is that important work? because uh, earning is more important, I will pay you for that waiting time. So then he said uh, that no, I would not wait for you sir, I am very sorry. See that in the, uh, 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 after dropping you, I would be going back and I would be just listening to the uh, Churchill's uh, national speech today. And uh, I would, I, I will not do any work then. So I am actually waiting for that national speech. So Churchill was very happy that, okay, that there is a person, this is how the people perceive me and they wait for my speech. So he was so happy that when he just, uh, when he was just deboarding from that particular uh, cab, so he handed over double money to that particular cab driver, double money to that particular cab driver and then he said that, that I am impressed that you are interested in the national politics. So then that cab driver said, sir, please wait, I will wait for you then and I will drop you back to your house. So then Churchill asked out of amazement, and what about the national speech? Will you hear it? So then he said, Churchill go to hell, money is the biggest thing. So that is, <laughs> so that was the point that money speaks then, not Churchill. <laughs> Chalo, go on break, we will <laughs> continue with the next part that is cabinet mission and then India's independence. So see that we are comfortably going in our course. So as the two classes are planned in the next week, so we'll be completing the stuff in the next week and uh, uh, all the miscellaneous topics. So today we are going to complete, I'm going to complete this topic of the partition and everything and uh, the mis the miscellaneous topics let me once again tell you that what all the topics I would be covering so I would start with those 
comparisons of the personalities Ambedkar, Gandhi, Nehru, Bose, ne oh, sorry that Gandhi, Bose. Then uh, I will talk about the development in the education, then communalism, then I will talk about uh, development in education and then freedom struggle in the princely state, different stages of the colonialism in the princely states and their own struggle which is going to get merged with the Indian national movement. Then I will mention about the peasant movement and organization in the 20th century. So not in the 19th, 19th part we have seen those tribal and civil peasants. So in the 20th century peasant organizations and their movement. And then I will talk about the rise of the left in India which includes the socialism, communism, then trade unions in India and uh, rise of the capitalist class in India, rise of press or development of press in India and then the last topic I'd be keeping that would be the freedom uh, contribution of the women in the Indian freedom struggle. So these all topics divided in the next two classes so comfortably we will be completing okay no so uh, hopefully but on Sunday since Tuesday there was a class planned but I requested for a rest and uh, hopefully on Sunday that we can that Sunday class is not right now planned but maybe it will be planned so then on Sunday we'll be completing this part okay so please write cabinet mission there is no third phase of revolutionary nationalism that is quit India movement only that is revolutionary nationalism so Phases you have written, but not every time we need to write. Right? So what happened in the Quit India movement, this all royalists, this is revolutionary nationalism, the parallel governments, the underground movement. So cabinet mission. Just one minute. So cabinet mission. Now listen. So listen, so uh, what were the proposals in this cabinet mission? Okay? So the proposals were uh, on one hand, this is very much like the British nature or British behavior. So the proposals were on one hand they would be saying something that we are rejecting this and in another word they will present the same thought. So what they did that at the very first place this cabinet mission rejected the demand of Muslim League for a separate nation. Okay? It seems like that it's all fine that it has rejected the demand of Muslim League for the separate nation but uh, it is going to accommodate this idea in a different way. So I will talk that how they are going to uh, accommodate this idea. Moreover that they wanted to create that uh, India where there would be a decentralized center or you can say that it was based on the idea to create a weak center and strong provinces. So weak center and strong federation or strong provinces. Then moreover, on one hand it said that they are, they are rejecting the proposal of the separate nation of the Muslim League. On the other hand, it is accommodating this thought. So how it is accommodating this thought? Understand. They said that all the Indian provinces, provinces would be divided into three groups and these groups would be group A, B, C. So what is group A? Group A would be the Hindu majority states. So they would be the Hindu majority states and we will write that which all states were Hindu majority. So for example, that uh, Central Province, United Province, then Bombay, Madras, <coughs> Bombay, Madras. So uh, these all provinces then which all Punjab, not Punjab, not Punjab in this one, Bihar, Odisha. So these all provinces would be in the uh, group A. So they would be in group A and they are Hindu majority states. In group B they said that Muslim majority states in the west on the western side, northwest and western side. So it includes Pakistan, Sindh and Punjab. So Pakistan, Sindh and Punjab they will go into that. And C, the Muslim majority provinces in the east side which will inclu include Bengal, Assam. So Bengal, Assam, Bengal here means that Bangladesh. So Bengal, Assam and also the parts of the Bengal. So this is what they proposed 
and looking at this kind of sectional division you are giving weightage to the idea of a separate nation because these groupings on the basis of religion itself is a kind you can say that uh, it's a type of a concept whereby you are in another way giving expression to the idea of the partition and moreover there are two blocks of the there are two blocks of the muslim provinces or two groups of the muslim provinces so anyway they can gang together and they can hijack the center so they are deliberately creating a weak center and strong provinces and that too on both the sides the two muslim dominated provinces then so muslim dominated province groups so they are giving expression to this moreover they further said that there are commissionary provinces according to their majority population they will join the respective groups so that also i will write on the board so at this time that indian national congress it rejected this grouping first they were confused that this grouping is optional or compulsory for which the cabinet mission maintained that no it is not optional it is compulsory so when it is compulsory so then uh, Indian National Congress said that let create the interim government then and let's form the constituent assembly and since we know that anyhow when the elections will happen so in the central assembly we would be getting the majority and with our majority we will change this provision when congress said this thing that they will change this provision a uh, muslim league rejected this particular cabinet mission so they rejected this cabinet mission but the viceroy at that point of time he uh, facilitated the creation of the interim government and though the rejection negation uh, these all kind of things were going on but the interim government was created under the prime ministership of the jawaharlal nehru so muslim league at that point of time decided that they will not join the interim government so they will not join the interim government but as i maintained to you that muslim league was favorite to the wevel viceroy wevel and secretly viceroy wevel brought after one month he brought the muslim league members to join the interim government so we will write the name of the people who joined from the side of the muslim league in the interim government so please write cabinet mission number 1 you write so the first was the cabinet mission the cabinet mission cabinet mission rejected the demand rejected the demand of muslim league rejected the demand of muslim league for separate nation for separate nation for separate nation full stop then further you mention cabinet mission was based on idea cabinet mission was based on idea on idea to create to create to create a weak center to create a weak center weak center and strong federation and strong federation then you write it proposed it proposed three group of provinces it proposed three group of provinces so you write group a and please leave little bit of space so that you can write the name of the provinces also and the commissionary provinces also i will be adding into this one so group a and then group b and group c so in front of that hindu majority state hindu majority states and which all states are there up cp bombay madras 
बिहार उड़ीसा बिहार उड़ीसा देन ग्रुप बी मुस्लिम मेजॉरिटी स्टेट स्टेट इन नॉर्थ वेस्ट पंजाब सिंध एन डब्ल्यू एफ पी नॉर्थ वेस्ट फ्रंटियर प्रोविंस एंड ग्रुप सी मुस्लिम मेजॉरिटी स्टेट स्टेट इन ईस्ट एंड दिस विल इंक्लूड बेंगाल एंड असम so there is a concept of the commissionary province also so for example commissionary just like that today we have the union territory so they had the concept of the commissionary provinces so ajmer kurg and delhi so they would be joining the commissionary uh, that they, these commissionary provinces would be joining group a because they have hindu majority population and baluchistan will join this group theek okay? hai so you write that with a different color i am also writing कमिश्नरी प्रोविंस प्रोविंस दिल्ली कुर्ग एंड अजमेर एंड अजमेर एंड हेयर बलूचिस्तान सो दिस द वन विच आई हैव रिटर्न विद द वाइट कलर दीज आर द कमिश्नरी प्रोविंसेस CP is for the central province UP is for the united province there is one more commissionary province there are four marwad please write marwad so in group a four commissionary provinces were there delhi marwad kurg and ajmer and uh, in group b बलूचिस्तान सो यू राइट द ग्रुपिंग द ग्रुपिंग वॉज गिविंग द ग्रुपिंग वॉज गिविंग स्ट्रॉंग एक्सप्रेशन द ग्रुपिंग वॉज गिविंग strong expression to the idea of to the idea of partition without being divided without being divided the idea of partition without being divided without being divided then you mention at this time congress congress maintained congress maintained that they will with their majority congress maintained that with their majority with their majority in the central legislature in the central legislature they will change this provision 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 as such as such muslim league rejected it as such muslim league rejected it then further you write so mandate of this cabinet mission was to create the constituent assembly and the interim government so they are going to get created so i'm not writing it as a mentioning it as a separate statement but we are just going to you know write it as that when the interim government was created so please write that after after the rejection of cabinet mission 
after the rejection of cabinet mission interim government was formed interim government was formed on 2nd of september 2nd of september 1946 2nd of september they are both rejected see that congress has also rejected some provisions not all the provisions then but muslim league rejected everything and how it rejected see that if you would it if it would have rejected one or two provisions so it would have joined the interim government but it rejected overall and that's why it did not join the interim government so please mention you right headed by 2nd of september 1946 headed by jawaharlal nehru jawaharlal nehru so 2nd of september this was created and then wevel who was the viceroy at this point of time so he was convincing persuading the muslim league leaders that he was saying that if you will not be part of the interim government government so you will not achieve anything and he convinced them and then they realized that is foolish to not join the interim government so as such on 26th of october 1946 five members of the muslim league they joined the interim government so please write that viceroy wevel viceroy wevel secret secretly viceroy wevel secretly brought the members of brought the members of muslim league brought the members of muslim league on 26th of october on 26th of october 1946 1946 to join to join the interim government to join the interim government then you mention five people five people from muslim link joined who were so i am writing the name of those all leaders from the muslim league who joined the interim government then so very first one was the liaquat ali khan liaquat ali khan ghaznafar khan I I Chandrigar Chandrigar Jogendra Nath Mondal Just a minute Jogendra Nath Mondal Abdul Rashid Nistar Abdul Rashid Nistar Abdul Rashid Nistar Viceroy Wevel the one whose plan you have written earlier So that's one and then as per this cabinet mission the constituent assembly was created and uh, purpose of this constituent assembly to frame the constitution of india the first meeting of this constituent assembly happened on 9th of december 1946 so please write as per the cabinet mission as per the cabinet mission yes kritika because see that this part that you are uh, understanding ii ai chandrigar and jogendranath mondal that's bengali side not the side of the uh, northwest then so northwest hindu population was less and with the name itself you can recognize that these are the bengalis then so mondal bengalis then chandrigar they are bengalis then so this is the bangla bangladesh side representation of the hindus then and that's how that bangladesh as compared to the pakistan is much more uh, secular in nature then 
at least the leadership then so leadership is quite progressive bangladesh leadership is quite progressive and moreover they understand the tits and bits of the economy then in fact many a times better than the indian economist so please mention the uh, uh, that as per the cabinet mission constituent assembly was established constituent assembly was established which hold which held its first meeting which held its first meeting on 9th of december 9th of december 1946 9th of December, 1946. <laughs> It's an interesting question, Subham Jagutse, if I'm pronouncing it. So it's interesting question, Subham. Just the way there is a Maulana Azad in the Congress, there was a Mondal in the Muslim League. ठीक <laughs> है. So keep on writing. so this is what is overall and now let's come to the last leg of our today's class that's final the atlees declaration so clement atlees the most important declaration of his and then after the india's independence partition and the boundary commission so please write after this you write the last heading at least declaration and uh, as per the at least declaration we will is going back from india okay and the person who will who will be coming to india he would be the lord mountbatten i am using this word because he deserves so so lord mountbatten is coming to india lord louis mountbatten that's the full name so lord louis mountbatten is coming to india and a thorough gentleman thorough gentleman quite rational quite pragmatic very practical and moreover he was the one who had a very good relation with the jawaharlal nehru and then also jawahar lal nehru had a very good relation with the lady mount button then so now you write that not you write you just listen so first of all uh, atli declared on 30th of that he declared that 30th of june 1948 would be the date of withdrawal of britishers from india so 30th of june 1948 but very soon he realized that this date is very distant so this date seemed to be very distant and then on 4th of july listen 4th of july 1947 he introduced in the house of commons uh, in british parliament india independence bill so that's the name of the bill so india independence bill and this bill got passed on 18th of july 1947 so as per this india independence bill india's freedom was to be given on the 15th of august 1947 so 15th of august 1947 and to create a road map for this particular uh, road map for the partition and then also the india's freedom mount bitten mission was sent to india so mount bitten was sent to india and we will talk about that what mount bitten did at that point of time so please mention atli declared actually declared declared that 30th of june 1948 30th of june 1948 would be the date of withdrawal would be the date of withdrawal of british from india date of withdrawal of british from india so a point to be noted by subham that what you have said indian national congress was secular but not the muslim league so how come he has joined so basically there are many such give and takes of a particular joining a party for example that the same example let me change the example at this point of time how sehnawaz hussain is there in the bjp 
<laughs> so if that example may uh, give you some kind of satisfaction, but let's come to different thing that the re real aspect. See, they were from the Bengali population then, and moreover, Muslim League also wanted, since they needed the support of the British and they were, they needed a hell lot of things from the Britain. So somehow, some way, they wanted to declare that by this time the Muslim League has changed its words, not the colors. I'm saying words, not the colors. So what are the words? That no, 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 minorities would be respected in the Pakistan. That we would be a religious that we would be a kind that we would be a muslim state but minorities would be getting some kind of position also post also and that's how some of the minorities were they would be called as the minorities they were lured by the muslim league to remain in the muslim league it is just like they're paying these minorities to remain in the muslim league just to present themselves as a better people in front of the british authority then so in front of the British authority and that's what was the exact reason then so that's what was the exact reason they never changed their colors their colors were always same but Pakistan that uh, that people from the side of the Pakistan they have this very versatile uh, aptitude that they change their words very frequently okay so you write then what you have written the date of withdrawal 30th of June would be the date 30th of June uh, 1948 would be the date of withdrawal then you write but it seemed very distant but it seemed very distant then further you write yes very good Vishwanath that's the point I appreciate that what you have written that they started to project themselves as that they are the protectors of the very good you have noted down that mondals were actually coming from the scheduled caste then so that was also the one point so please write it seemed very distant on 4th of july on 4th of july india independence bill india independence bill was introduced India Independence Bill was introduced which was which was passed by passed by or passed on which was passed on 18th of July 1947 18th of July 1947 then you write as per this now so this bill has passed so now it has become act i hope you know this thing so we call it bill and after getting passed it is act so india independence act so as per this act as per this act 15th of august 1947 15th of august 1947 15th of August 1947 was set as the date of India's freedom was set as the date of India's freedom India's freedom and and in this regard in this regard Mount Batten plan was forwarded and in this regard Mount Batten plan was forwarded Mountbatten plan was forwarded. Now listen. So what is this Mountbatten plan? When Mountbatten uh, came to India, so then he was of the view that since there are two Pakistan, one on the eastern side and one on the eastern uh, eastern side and one on the western side, and both are that in such a kind of a strategic position that they will do much harm to the mainland India. And how come? So he was more con uh, 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 concerned about the minority section the minority section which will go into the pakistan and the minority section which will go into the bangladesh then so minority section so where this minority will come from so listen this very carefully as per the initial initial proposals that as per the initial things that entire punjab including the indian punjab will go into the pakistan so that will be part of the pakistan so it means that sikh who are becoming the part of the pakistan they would be minority 
and in fact large number of Hindus are also part of the uh, that uh, Punjab so they would also be minority in Pakistan on the other hand the Indian West Bengal so which was a Hindu majority which was a Hindu majority area and then if it goes to the Bangladesh that area so they there would be a good number of the Hindu minorities in the Bangladesh or in the eastern side of the Pakistan or eastern Pakistan so uh, Mountbatten maintained that if a nation is getting created on the basis of religion and that nation is the Pakistan so if a nation is getting created on the basis of the religion so no words of this particular country or the leader are sufficient enough to convince us that they would be safeguarding the rights of the minority so if India has to be divided and if they have demanded that a country on the basis of religion so none of the minorities will go into the Pakistan so none of the minorities will go into the Pakistan and since Indian National Congress from the very beginning has maintained and it has displayed that it is secular one so it is the secular leadership so if the India has to be divided so as the Punjab and Bengal and that's how so Punjab was divided as per Mountbatten plan and uh, Bengal was divided as per Mountbatten plan and the maximum unity was retained with the Indian Union so for this particular leadership and for this particular bold decision Mountbatten needs a name before his name and that is Lord Mountbatten so you always call him you always write him Lord Mountbatten in fact when you read the Pakistani textbook I have read they, they consider they call him as a kind of a monster that Mountbatten has been displayed as a monster and rightly so then they were about to get these all areas and they didn't got these all areas then so please write so please write mention as per Mountbatten's plan as per so let me write his name also Lord Mountbatten as per Mountbatten's plan if India was to be divided if India was to be divided so as so as Pakistan so as the new Pakistan so as the new Pakistan to retain to retain to retain maximum unity to retain maximum unity with the Indian mainland maximum unity with the Indian mainland and 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 to safeguard and to safeguard the rights of minority and to safeguard the rights of minority then full stop as per the plan as per the plan as per the plan Punjab and Bengal Punjab, Punjab and Bengal was also to be divided Punjab and Bengal was also to be divided so this is one part then to uh, enact this partition a boundary commission was appointed and this boundary commission was headed by Sir Radcliffe so boundary commission was headed by Sir Radcliffe so the report of this particular Radcliffe boundary commission was already available by 10th of August 1947 but Mountbatten at the end he was a British so he did not disclose this plan by 10th or 11th of August but he disclosed it after 15th of August because he did not wanted any share of blame of the communal massacre which may happen communal right which may happen on the British head so he must have a clear instruction from his monarchs from the Britain so please write to to enact the partition to enact the partition enact the partition 
बाउंड्री कमीशन बाउंड्री कमीशन वॉज क्रिएटेड बाउंड्री कमीशन वॉज क्रिएटेड वॉज क्रिएटेड under the chairmanship of sir radcliffe under the chairmanship of sir radcliffe under the chairmanship of sir radcliffe radcliffe then you write the report was available the report was available by 10th of august by 10th of august 1947 1947 but but it was made public but it was made public after 15th of august it was made public after 15th of august so as so as the responsibility so as the responsibility must not fall must not fall on the british authority responsibility must not fall on the british authority okay so this is what is all about the india's freedom we have achieved it today and then so rest of the topics which i have mentioned to you will we will be conducting in the next classes to your question manu that they, they didn't talk good about any of the politicians of india in fact let me tell you that at the time of the partition it was the gandhi who was hell bent that pakistan must be given its share then so many a times gandhi was quite adamant that this much money must be given to the pakistan and him this much share must be given to the pakistan so gandhi was that gandhi's ideas were based on the, his values and his belief that uh, if it has been uh, has to be divided so then the shares of the treasury has to be divided so that was one point but even after that they have not spared gandhi they have written gandhi like a kind of they always said that he was a hindu nationalist in the disguise of a kind of a mahatma then so though they are not abusing gandhi but they always commented gandhi in a different way to them everyone was a villain in india then so this is what is all about their history is interesting in fact if you find history interesting at any point of time so do read the if you get chance in india you will not go get those textbook but whenever you get chance to go to us and britain you will find the textbooks of the pakistan and then do read then do read those textbooks they are really very funny and they make history dramatically interesting then so dramatically interesting it's just like that uh, their knowledge is just like that their prime minister prime prime minister imran khan then it's googly most of the time in swinger and out singers then but <laughs> there are no yorkers so chalo with this note i am ending today's class and then class next two classes we would be completing the modern indian history syllabus chalo thank you and good night to all of you